Random events with a continuum of outcomes can be described using probability density functions. So we say that every continuous random variable x has a probability density little f that is a function that takes on non-negative values and its integral from negative infinity to infinity is equal to 1. This way one can compute the probability of the random variable having an outcome between a and b via the integral from a to b of f of x dx. The most famous probability density function is probably the, that of the standard normal distribution. It's called the Gaussian and for its graph it has the famous bell-shaped curve. Um, so this function takes on non-negative values, um, in fact positive values, and at the area under the graph is equal to 1. This is due to the famous Gaussian uh, integral. Now there are various important properties that one can read off from the probability density function. So for example, the mean or the expected value of your uh, variable x can be obtained by taking the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx. And this mean or expected value is often denoted by nu. So this basically is the x coordinate of the centroid of the region that is under the curve, that is the uh, graph of the probability density function. And for this uh, standard a normal distribution you can probably see how it's uh, zero but that need not be the case the mean can be shifted around to be at one or negative two for example another important property of uh, random variables is uh, the variance or uh, squared standard deviation so that you obtain by subtracting the mean from x squaring x minus mu and then uh, integrating that square times f of x dx from negative infinity to infinity. So this variance roughly speaking gives you how much the probability density is, be, is spread out around the mean. So uh, to give you an idea here are some uh, normal distributions with different variance, different uh, standard deviation. Um, they all have the same mean uh, expected value of zero but as you see you go from sigma the standard deviation being 1 to 2 it's more spread out whereas if we half the standard deviation uh, we get a much more concentrated uh, probability density now uh, with these notions in place let's solve some problems using probability density functions find a value n that makes f into a probability density function if f is defined in this way so pause the video and input your answer in the box Hope you paused it and have found this value to be 1. So um, for this function to be a probability density function, it needs to satisfy two conditions. It needs to be non-negative, so that tells us that capital N needs to be a non-negative number for sure. But more importantly, the integral of this function from negative infinity to infinity needs to be equal to 1. And since this function takes on zeros uh, everywhere outside uh, the interval between 0 and 1, so this, this in integral is the same as integrating f uh, for between 0 and 1, where it takes the value n, and this integral is simply equal to n, so that um, we can ensure that this integral uh, from negative infinity to infinity is equal to 1 if n is set to be 1. Let's look at the next question. Find the value of lambda that makes f into a probability density function if f is defined in this way. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have found the value to be 3. So again, what determines the value of lambda is the condition, the requirement that the integral of f of x uh, from negative infinity to infinity is equal to 1. So let's compute that improper integral from negative infinity to infinity. f of x dx is... Um, equal to the integral of the function from 0 to infinity since for negative values it takes on um, the value 0 so it's only from 0 to infinity that we need to compute this integral of lambda times e to the minus 3x dx so lambda being a constant can be factored out then we are left with lambda times this integral uh, from 0 to infinity of e to the minus 3x dx an antiderivative of the function e to the minus 3x would be e to the minus 3x divided by negative 3 and its change as x goes from 0 to infinity taking the limit there of course gives us um, lambda times uh, 
a third minus zero, that's the limit at um, infinity, so we get lambda over three, and for that integral to be equal to one, this needs to be equal to one, lambda over three, which tells us that lambda needs to be equal to three. Let's look at the next question. Find the mean of the uniform distribution on the interval between zero and four, so the probability density function as, is defined as you can see there, and your task is to find the mean of this probability uh, distribution, pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you pause it and I found the value to be 2. So this is to be expected from a uniform distribution between uh, 0 and 4 to have the mean, the expected value to be uh, the value in between uh, at midpoint, that is 2. But let's actually compute this mean. So the mean is obtained by taking the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx now this function f of x is zero outside of the interval between zero and four, so we, re we really need just to integrate from uh, zero to four. Uh, x times, the value of the function between zero and four is a fourth, so x over four is what we are integrating. Um, Antiderivative of that would be x squared over eight. Its change between zero and four is going to be uh, 4 squared over 8, 16 over 8, that is equal to 2 as expected. Let's look at the next question. Find the mean mu of the exponential distribution with parameter lambda equals 1. So the probability density function is defined as you see there and your task is to compute the mean, input uh, your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you find uh, the mean to be 1. So the mean again is computed by taking the integral uh, from negative infinity to infinity of x times the probability density function f of x dx. Now again this function takes on zeros uh, for negative x so it's only for uh, positive x that we need to integrate from 0 to infinity x times e to the negative x dx and this integral is something we computed in a previous video can be found to be 1, uh, so uh, using um, integration by parts is one way uh, to obtain this. If this is equal to u and this is equal to dv, doing integration by parts, then uh, evaluating the improper integral um, will have you find the mean to be equal to 1. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.